Hi, Gary Rose for RefTech. In the next few minutes, I will show you how to braze copper tube using H55 temper tubing known as half hard, combined with precision swaging and preformed brazing rings. The goal is to produce high quality, full depth brazed joints without the use of purchased fittings. All high quality brazed joints require proper safety, tools, materials, and techniques. Safety being an obvious requirement. Since brazing is a high temperature process, be aware that severe burns can occur from direct contact with any flame and that the heated tube remains hot for a long time. Adequate ventilation should be provided to protect workers from exposure to fumes. Don't braze near flammable or explosive materials and have a fire extinguisher near and accessible. You should wear personal protective equipment to protect hair and eyes, wear fire retardant clothing, and use heavy gloves and glasses that protect against the radiant energy of brazing. This is not an all-inclusive safety list, so be sure to follow the safety requirements and guidelines. Tools are another important thing that is required. Using the proper tools and materials is essential to creating quality brazes with swage joints. We'll go over the necessary tools. First of all, get yourself a spring-loaded tubing cutter and a hand deburring tool both with very sharp replacement blades. It's very important that sharp blades be used. You can also use a swirl or turbo torch for smaller tube and for larger tube greater than 7 8 inch, RefTech recommends an oxypropane propane setup or oxyacetylene. For cleaning the outside of the tube after brazing, you'll need a stainless steel wire brush. And of course, a clean rag and a bucket of water for protection of adjacent heat sensitive parts. Never braze without nitrogen. That means you'll need a nitrogen cylinder with dry nitrogen in it. A nitrogen regulator and flow meter or a combination regulator and flow meter. In order to eliminate the need for store-bought couplings, you will also need a RefTech SwageX swaging tool. That wraps up the tools. Now let's talk about recommended materials. I would use Scotch-Brite pads, green or maroon, for cleaning the inside and outsides of the tube. A clean white linen cloth to clean the end of the tube after Scotch-Briting. Also really important are RefTech preformed brazing rings. These are copper phosphorus brazing filler, 15% silver. They're self-fluxing and this is the good stuff. And most important is RefTech H55 temper or half hard ACR type L copper tubing. Soft copper tubing will also work. If you're going to use traditional H58 hard copper, everything we're going to talk about works, except that you cannot swage it. You're going to have to use store-bought couplings and make two brazes per coupling. The brazing rings still work, but you will need two of them per joint. If the tubing needs to be cut, we will need the sharp tubing cutter mentioned earlier. Mark the location of the cut and using the tubing cutter carefully make a square cut applying light to medium pressure between the cutting wheel and the copper tube. The goal is to avoid deforming the end of the tube which can cause fitment issues into the swage sockets. Now we need to deburr the inside of the tube. There will always be a lip on the inside of the tube and this must be removed before we swage. Both, in, both male and female ends must be deburred for a proper brazed joint. Next, we will use green or maroon Scotch-Brite pad to remove the oxidation on the outside or male end of the tube joint and inside the female end of the tube joint. Don't use sandpaper or emery cloth, as this may affect the capillary action of the joint, making it more difficult to create a quality braze. Finally, we need to clean both the male and female tube ends with a clean lintless cloth. 
This helps remove particles and contamination from the newly prepped ends. I know it seems like a lot of unnecessary work, but it really will produce better brazes that are much less likely to leak. Now, here comes the fun part, swaging the tube end. We only need to swage one end of each joint. The swage X tool will make a brazing socket that has just the right clearance for a great braze. Again, only soft O60 or light drawn H55 half hard copper can be swaged. Do not swage hard copper. First, select the proper swage head for the tubing to be bent. Fully thread the head onto the swage X tool. Keeping the swage X tool vertical or at most rotated horizontal either way, insert the swaging head into the copper tube until fully inserted. Keeping the tool perpendicular to the tube, pull the trigger and let the tool fully cycle. Don't let up on the trigger. If the end of the copper is dinged up so you can't get the tool into the copper, then it's possible to use the very tip of the swaging tool head to open the copper up to its original inside diameter. Don't use this trick to skip deburring. You'll end up with a lousy braze if you don't deburr it properly. Just remember I told you so. Did it work? Test fit the male tube end into the brazing socket. It should be tight, but not so tight that you can't get it all the way in. If it's too tight, insert the swaging tool back into the socket, rotate 20 degrees from the first swage operation, and pull the trigger again. This should increase the socket diameter just enough to allow the male tube end to fit. You have now created a brazing socket that conforms to the ASME standard for brazing sockets. You may notice that the socket depth is not as deep as what is found on store-bought fittings. Store-bought fittings have deeper sockets that are meant for soldering. The shallower socket created by the Swayjack hand tool creates an ideal brazing socket in accordance with ASME brazing standards. There's a manual release switch on the back of the swaging tool that will release the pressure and allow you to remove the tool if it gets stuck somewhere. A word of caution. This tool is not made for a production line setting where you swage one tube after another. The tool will get hot in these situations and ruin the motor. Normal field operation will allow the tool to cool between swages. The next cool thing is the brazing ring. This allows you to braze the joint from the inside out, creating a fillet on both ends of the joint, one on the inside and one on the outside. This means you have a full depth braze, giving you the best chance to a leak-free braze joint. How cool is that? RefTech brazing rings are B cup 5, that means copper phosphorus with 15% silver. They're self-fluxing on copper. Think Silphos 15 or Stafesilv 15. There are different ring sizes for each size of tube and they contain enough brazing filler to complete even a solder depth socket from store-bought fittings. Let's select the proper size brazing ring for the tubing we're brazing. Make sure the ring is shiny, silver bronze color, and it should be round and have a gap between the ends. The ring should have no obvious defects or abnormalities. Place the brazing ring into the end of the female socket. Don't push it into the bottom of the socket with your finger or your thumb. And if it won't fit into the socket square to the tube with a little gap, then get another brazing ring. It needs a little gap. Now insert the male tube into the brazing socket and use it to push the brazing ring to the bottom of the socket. The male tube must stay in contact with the brazing ring in order for a successful brazing process. Provide nitrogen purge as you should for any copper brazing job. You should flow nitrogen to displace oxygen. Do not pressurize the tube. As mentioned previously, a turbo torch or swirl tip designed for alternate fuel air using MAP Pro will work on smaller tube sizes. For tubing larger than 7 8 use either oxypropane or oxyacetylene. Just remember, with brazing, hotter is not necessarily better. The idea is even heat on the joint, just enough to melt the brazing filler. The joint should not get hotter than 1500 degrees. As the brazing material will be drawn towards the heat, 
Start by heating the male tube evenly to distribute the heat near the joint. Gradually move the heat down to the female socket, keeping the flame moving. Even heat is what you want. No need to heat beyond the socket. When you start to see brazing alloy appearing at the junction of the male and female tubes, you're nearly done. Work the flame around the joint until you have a brazing alloy showing around the full 360 degree perimeter. There it is. We've created a properly brazed joint. You'll notice it only required one braze as opposed to two traditionally required when using store-bought couplings. This reduces the leak potential by half. Brazing is kind of like painting your house. It's all in the prep. The actual painting, or in this case brazing, is the easy part. Good tools, good materials, and proper preparation make the difference. RefTech H55 tubing, brazing rings, and Swagex tool give you the best chance for a first class brazed copper piping system. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to watch our other videos.